All right, so we know how to define hyperbolic functions in terms of exponentials, but quite miraculously, hyperbolic functions satisfy a whole bunch of identities that look very similar to trig identities. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so here's a bunch of them. So the first one here is pretty simple. It's just saying that a hyperbolic sine is an odd function, which follows by definition of the hyperbolic sine. And this is saying that a hyperbolic cosine is an even function. And you can derive similar formula for hyperbolic tan, hyperbolic cotan, so I'll leave that as an exercise. Now, the second bunch of identities here is much more interesting. So this identity here looks very similar to the famous identity sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, but the sine is different, and that's actually super important. Now, from this one, you can derive the two other ones by dividing by either uh, hyperbolic cosine squared or hyperbolic sine squared, as you would do for trig identities. Now you see here there's also identities for addition of angle formula. They are very similar to the trig ones, but the signs again are different. And in fact, you can pick your favorite trig identities. There will be an analog for hyperbolic functions, but the signs will be different. So you have to be very, very careful with signs when you talk about hyperbolic identities. All right, so what I want to do now is prove this one. That's the only one I'll prove. These ones uh, will be left as an exercise, uh, but it's actually quite instructive exercise to prove these identities. Okay, so let me prove the identity about the square. So the identity I want to prove is that the hyperbolic cosine square of x minus the hyperbolic sine square of x is equal to 1. So I'll just use the definition. So hyperbolic cosine is e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2. Then I take the square minus e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. That's the definition of hyperbolic sine and I take the square. All right, next step, I'll just expand the squares. So for the first one, I'll get 1 over 4. And if I take the square of the numerator here, I get e to the 2x. The cross term gives e to the x times e to the minus x, which is just 1. I get this twice, I get plus 2, plus e to the minus 2x, minus, again, 1 over 4. First, e to the 2x. Cross term here is minus 1, so I get minus 2. And then this times itself becomes plus e to the minus 2x. All right, now here's where the magic happens. This term here cancels with this term. This term cancels with this term. So all we're left with is pretty simple. We'll get 1 over 4 times 2 minus 1 over 4 times minus 2. So this is just 1 half minus minus one half, which is indeed just equal to one. There you go, identity proved. Well, that's pretty cool. And now you can prove all the other identities in a very similar way. All you have to do is replace the hyperbolic functions by the definition in terms of exponentials, play with the exponentials, and you cannot prove all the identities in a relatively straightforward fashion. Okay, but that leads me to something pretty interesting. So why are these functions called hyperbolic function to start with? What does it mean? Why, why do we use the word hyperbolic? Well, it's actually very interesting. So let's start with the trig functions. Okay, so here's a circle. What's the equation of a circle? That's x squared plus y squared equals to 1, right? Okay, but we also know that trig functions satisfy the identity cos squared of t plus sine squared of t is equal to 1. So what that means is that I can actually parametrize my circle here by saying that x is equal cos of t and y is equal to sine of t. Right? If x is equal to cos of t and y is equal to sine of t, this will be satisfied identically because of the identity for trig functions. Another way of saying the same thing is that if I pick any point on my circle here, the coordinates can be written as cos of t and sine of t. So this is how you define trig functions in terms of the circle. And we know that very well. But it turns out that hyperbolic functions play the exact same role, but instead of a circle, we now have an hyperbola. So what is the equation of a hyperbola? Well, here's a hyperbola. The equation is going to be of this hyperbola as x squared minus y squared equals to 1. So you see that the sign is different but I get exactly the same thing for hyperbolic function as well. So my identity for hyperbolic function was that the hyperbolic cosine square 
minus the hyperbolic sine square was equal to 1. So what this is saying is that I can parameterize my hyperbola by setting x is equal to hyperbolic cosine and y is equal to hyperbolic sine. Or in other words, of saying the same thing. Another way of saying the same thing is that the point on my hyperbola has coordinate given by hyperbolic cos and hyperbolic sine. So the moral of the story here is the hyperbolic function play the exact same role for hyperbola that trig functions play for the trig circle. So that's why we call them hyperbolic functions.